welcome to the special edition of Riding with Rex. This is the Theosaurus Rex, and I am with the absolute star. The, the, the I wouldn't say money maker because he does it non-profit, but the amazingness that is Seth from the Christian Commute. It is his idea of doing a drive home commute that inspired this humble, amazing, and yet ridiculously humble little cartoon drawing to, try, to talk about stuff on his way home. Thank you for that flowering introduction that took 10% of the show's time. <laughs> hey, the first 10% we're, you can skip. We're, yeah, somebody's going to hit the skip, but we're, we're the, it says that we're only like 15 minutes away from where we're going. Well, we ain't got a lot of time. Talk fast. Yep. So, um, we just went to this really interesting little hole in the wall um, place for barbecue, which is too hot for me to eat. And I have it in a to go thing because it's going to be hot later. That, that probably, but I'll give it to somebody else. Oh. It won't be as I won't feel as bad about wasting it. So, it's $12. Well, it's, yeah. That is the, the cost to going to um, local places. So we just, after eating though, we went and we saw there was a Masonic Lodge and we went and drove around the, um, the graveyard. Well, no, it was a church graveyard and the church was next door to a Masonic Lodge. Right. It was the Adairsville Masonic Lodge and it's in between the Adairsville Church of God and Uthaluga Church, uh, Baptist Church, and it's it. Uh, I mean, it's right next door to Uthaluga Baptist Church, so it's a church graveyard, right? Which had a lot of really old graves. Yes, which is very interesting. So let me ask you this: now, all of my easily single-digit ones and twos of listeners are probably wondering what's wrong with there being a Masonic lot for oh, now. But now that you know they, that I'm on the show, you're true. going to get like 10 or 11. Yes, yeah, probably even maybe more than 10. Although my old channel, I had like a whole lot. I like, anyway, side issue. So, but a lot of people are going to think, hey, Masonic stuff, Masons, aren't those people that lay bricks? They use, yes. Brick Masons. What in the world? I'm going to go to this North Georgia <laughs> Baptist College. What? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> we remember we said we were going to do it. Yeah, but we almost died in doing it. We're <laughs> All right, so Freemasonry, what's known as speculative masonry, which is different than actual stone masonry. Um, okay. So it's not people who are really masons and builders for their jobs. They it's not are, like an old guild back in the day. Yeah, it, they just it's just a takeoff of the guild. And it's uh, a fraternal order and spiritual and religious order. Mile, turn right to stay on Hensley Road southeast. We're lost, by the way. <laughs> so what's wrong with masonry is that it's religious and it is a religion other than Christianity, biblical Christianity. So would you say that, so you're saying they're directly, they're diametrically opposed? Yes. Okay. But I know there's a lot of people who go to oh Philadelphia Baptist Church? It's in a house. Turn right, stay on Hensley oh, Road, okay. Southeast. There are a lot of left well, we'll Canada. find out in a moment why people who are Baptists, a lot of them are Baptists down here in the South, um, go, go to Freemason stuff. Wow, what is all this? Make a U-turn, then turn left. We got to pause. <laughs> this is amazingly terrible. In a half mile, turn right well, onto US 41 North. We went around and scoped out the place. We might visit back another day. Uh, we apologize for this interesting break in Yeah, uh, we got we got a mix of strange things. We're trying to talk about the cult of Freemasonry, and we passed by a King James only yes. Bible college. And we know this because <laughs> I looked at the course syllabus, and one of the things you can take is in defense of the King James. So that is why I took that strange turn but back to masonry um, so there are people who go and they're like deacons and they're elders in the the Baptist Church but yet they go to free they're Freemasons one might be a worshipful master which is like a leader 
of it, but they're also a deacon. I mean, you said they're diametrically yeah. opposed. Right. Turn right onto US 41 North. The, the Masonic Lodge, if you listen to one of their funeral services, um, implicit in the language of the funeral service is that getting to heaven, what, what they call the Grand Lodge, that getting to heaven... Continue on US 41 North for three quarters of a mile. <laughs> that getting to heaven is the result of a, a virtuous life, living a good life. That's a works-based salvation. It is contrary to the biblical gospel that we're saved not by works, but by grace through our faith. And any Master Mason, whether or not he's a Christian, is entitled to this religious ceremony, which preaches a false gospel. That is but one of the things about Freemasonry that's antithetical uh, to the Bible and to Christianity. To Union Grove Road, Southeast. I'm going to turn that down. <laughs> I think that would be a good idea. So now, how do we know? So, okay, so there are people who obviously have some problems in their beliefs, but if, if, it's, if all you have to do to be a Christian is to do what Paul said and confess Jesus as your Lord, believe that he has been raised from the dead, we can be saved. We're going to die. This, this is That's what, right. We are going to die. Right. And we need to be right with the Lord before we do. Because if you die in your sins, you'll go to hell. We are going to die. <laughs> we also may die because of your driving. We're taking some abrupt turns. Okay. <laughs> well, I had to turn the GPS down. It was too loud for the show. It was ruining it. That is true. And so much for any sort of anonymity. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So, okay. So, how, if all you have to do to become a Christian is to believe in your heart that has been raised from the dead and confess to about Jesus as Lord, what does it matter? Why aren't, aren't they just off a little bit theologically by promoting more of a works-based kind of thing? Well, Paul says in Galatians 1.8 that if anyone comes to you preaching a different gospel, even if it's an angel from heaven, let him be accursed. So, and, and, and Paul's talking about the Galatian Judaizers there who Paul refers to later on in Galatians in chapter 2 as false brethren. So and That's because they taught a more work-based... Yeah, so how do, I believe, how do I know somebody believes they're saved by the grace of God or whether they believe they're saved by living in the light of masonry and doing good works when they say both? Which one's true? Creates confusion. Um... One of them is a liar. So what, what I at least know is that the person is a liar, which Christians aren't supposed to be. You're not supposed right. to be a liar. So Masons, quite frankly, I do not believe are not to be trusted. I don't care if your granddaddy's a Mason or your daddy's a Mason. or You know uh, the, all these good men who are Masons, who are very nice and do a lot of work in town. Um, ask them about their Masonry. Tell them, you know, say, what are your secret oaths? Give me the first three oaths, the, the, the words you took to enter Masonry. And they'll say, no, it's a secret. You have to join Masonry. Um, but you can find those oaths at various published sources, and they conflict with Christianity and the things they promise and say. So it's not just the false gospel of Freemasonry. It's the oath to enter Freemasonry is antithetical to Christianity. You have to disobey Jesus to do it by taking an unchristian oath. I'm not saying don't ever take oaths. I'm saying there's there's oaths not appropriate for a Christian. Right. For the sake of time, um, we can't get into those, but you can find them on the Internet. So Freemasonry is a religion other than Christianity, and it is syncretism. Um, so... A Freemason should not be a member in good standing at a church. They should be called to repent, and if they won't repent, they should be removed from that body. So what about your Masons <clears throat> that are... Um, now, isn't it... So I've, I've heard, and this occurs with a lot of other different kind of quote-unquote cults, as we will say, that it's totally fine. Like, it's a social club for, like, the first, like, five levels or something, whatever it is, like, a certain amount of time. The only when you get into the deeper, like, darker stuff is it, does it become bad. Well, that's, that's an argument I've heard. And that's an argument I've heard from pastors. Well, you know, some people don't know how bad it is because they're not in the top levels or they don't understand it. But as I just said, you have to take three oaths to become a Master Mason. You have to take an oath to become, become an entered apprentice, a second oath to become a fellow craft, and a third oath to become a master mason. And each one of those oaths is antithetical to a biblical worldview. So you have to sin to become a mason. So even though there are masons who don't know about the more esoteric, more um, blatantly heretical and anti-biblical things at the higher level, to get to the level they're at, 
they have to uh, break God's laws. Wow. Are there, for the record, we didn't practice this. This is just flowing rather awesome, except when we tried to, we almost died. Um, are there any other, so if let's, in the short amount of time that we have left. I can drive slower. It's all good. <laughs> so what would you, so you said if, if you know someone that is a Mason, and um, you know, so you would say, well, ask them about the O so that they can't tell you that's an issue. Um, what's another thing you would do? Let's say that someone who's popped on here, their family friend is a Mason and in good standing with the church. How would you um, go to talk with them? I well, would don't, recommend you do that. Don't go all half cocked. Do your research on the internet from former Masonic sources. There's like Freemasons for Jesus or former Masons for Jesus. You can Google these things and find former Freemasons who say, I was in Masonry, but I, I got saved and I wanted to get out because it was antithetical to Christianity. And they'll tell you why. Jack Harris is a, a good resource from that. So you can, you can it's called the, the, the Secret Cult Among Us, Freemasonry, The Cult Among Us by Jack Harris. So you can get that book. Or you can go to gsethdunn.wordpress.com and look at all my uh, uh, articles on Freemasonry. You can go to Pulpit and Pen and look at their articles on Freemasonry. You can go to Watchman Fellowship and find their uh, spiritual profile on Freemasonry. And it won't take you but maybe a couple days of research and reading to find several knockdown, drag out arguments to why uh, Freemasonry is antithetical to Christianity. And here's the thing. It's not secrets that your Masonic friend or church member doesn't know. Your other church members don't know them. So when you try to tell this guy to repent, and he won't, let's say he won't, worst case scenario, and you have to bring him before the church, now you have to educate them. Because all they know is he's this nice guy who's in a social club, and the social club supports orphanages and does charity drives and does lots of good works around town. And they say it's Christian and they believe in God. So how can he be in something bad so that's the challenge so you just have to tell them what the bad things are so if you were going to so to you like a, an intro level to kind of find out and even if not with masonry with other kind of like cults or things that may have off beliefs the watchman fellowship you would go there to get kind of an overview yes. and then they can go to either pulpit and pin what is it pulpit and pin pulpit and pin dot org or gsethdunn.wordpress.com We need to get you like an actual domain. If, yes, I know. <laughs> if you Google Seth Dunn Freemasonry, you're going to find some stuff. <laughs> That's S-E-T-H-D-U-N-N. -N. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Do you have any closing tips on masonry? Well, here's why it's insidious as a cult. Uh, Jehovah's Witnesses, they're at their own quote unquote church. Mormons are at their own church and they don't claim to be a part of yours. Um, they're not trying to come into your church as wolves in sheep's clothing. They will tell you flat out if you press them on it that your church is not their one true church. So it's, a, it's, it's plainly a different religion. But with Freemasonry, um, people who say they're Christians will sneak into your church and become deacons and leaders and influential people. And then you have wolves in sheep's clothing in your own church. People who say, I am a Christian and I am a Freemason. So you're not going to have a Jehovah's Witness say, I'm a Jehovah's Witness and I'm a Baptist. You're not going to have a Mormon say, I'm a Mormon and I'm in the Church of God. You're not going to have people who say that. But you will have Freemasons who say, I'm a Christian and a Baptist in the Baptist Church and I'm also a Freemason. That's syncretism. That's, that's sharing the house of God with the house of idols. That's putting uh, an idol of Baal in Yahweh's temple. And that is a very old kind of sin that makes God really, really, really mad. And I wouldn't want to be on the receiving end of his anger or putting up with this kind of idolatry in my church. Lastly, as we're almost there, is it, I keep saying that, but it, I is there down. hope for someone who maybe have been in masonry or family members have been in masonry, is there hope for them or have they already committed the unpardonable sin? No, there's hope for there's there's hope for them to repent and accept the gospel of Jesus Christ, or if they actually are regenerate and are in the sin of masonry, to repent of that sin through the power of the Holy Spirit convicting them. 
Um, so it's not like they've, what is it, blasphemed the Holy Spirit and they're not savable uh, because they've been involved in masonry. So there is hope. Uh, so from an evangelism perspective, you have an opportunity. And then from a church holiness and church discipline, you have an opportunity uh, when dealing with Freemasonry. Cool. Awesome. Thank you very much. You can find more on Seth. You can go to gsethdunn at wordpress.com. You can go to pulpitandpen.org, which I have a little bit of issue with, but that's a side thing. But you can find some of his writings there. You can also check out The Christian Commute, which is a podcast. Um, and he drives home, and you have a you kind of you have a Bible study, and you have topics yep. you talk about. And um, it's very cool. It's very good to listen to because it's all done in one take as well, right? One take. Woo, that's the no way to do it. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Nobody complains about my driving. <laughs> I complain about the driving of others. That's probably true. Well, no one's there to complain about. It's not about. probably true. It is true. <laughs> I did it yesterday. <laughs> awesome. Thank you very much for joining us on the fourth episode of Writing with Rex. All right. Bye. Woo. Thanks. I don't know how to stop it now.